Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing about the requirements for post-weld heat treatment in accordance with the UCL 56 of ASME Section 8 Division 1. Let's have a look into the contents of ASME Section 8 Division 1. ASME Section 8 Division 1 is divided into three subsections. The first subsection is the subsection A which is the general requirements and it is denoted as UG. That means the general requirement is applicable to all other subsections. That is, it is applicable to subsection B, subsection C. The second subsection is the subsection B, which is the method of fabrication of vessel. That is divided into three parts. The first part is by welding, which is denoted as UW, and the second part is by forging, which is denoted as UF, and the third part is by bracing, which is denoted as UB. The third and the last subsection is the subsection C, which is the classes of materials for construction of pressure vessel. The first class is the carbon and low alloy steels which is denoted as UCS and the second class is the non-ferrous materials which is denoted as UNF and the third class is the UHA which is the high alloy steels etc. The requirements for post well heat treatment is given in UCS 56 of ASME Section 8 Division 1 and the procedure for post well heat treatment is given in UW 40 of ASME Section 8 Division 1. Prior to moving into the UCS 56, let's have a look on the stages of PWHD. The PWHD is divided into five different steps. The first step is the controlled, uncontrolled heating process right up to 425 degrees Celsius. That means up to 425 degrees Celsius, there is no control on the rate of heating. The second stage is the controlled heating process which is taken from 425 degrees Celsius to 620 degrees Celsius, which is the soaking temperature. That is right from 425 to soaking temperature, the heating rate shall be controlled by the core to a particular amount. That means the heating rate shall be a uniform manner, in a uniform manner. The third is the soaking. Soaking is the process of key keeping the pressure vessel for a particular temperature and for a particular time period in order to relieve the stresses. The fourth is the controlled cooling process. From soaking temperature, soaking temperature that is 620 degrees Celsius to 425 degrees Celsius, the cooling is to be controlled by the coat. Right from 425 degrees Celsius to below, the cooling shall be held in steel layer. This is the fifth stages, fifth stage. And we move into the requirement for PWHT as per UCS 56 of Section 8, Division 1. The first requirement is the heating rate, which is given in UCS 56 D2 that state that above 425 degrees Celsius, the rate of heating shall be not more than 222 degrees Celsius per hour divided by the maximum metal thickness of the shell or head plate in inches. But no cases more than 222 degrees Celsius. That means the maximum rate of heating shall be restricted to 222 degrees Celsius. In order to find the heating rate divide this that is 222 degree, degree Celsius by the nominal thickness of the vessel 
then we will get the rate of heating. The second statement is the heating. That means that state that during the heating period there shall not be a greater variation in temperature throughout the portion of the vessel being heated than 140 degrees Celsius within any 4.6 meter interval of length. That means the heating shall be conducted in a uniform manner and there shall not be any temperature gradient greater than 140 degrees Celsius at 4.6 meter interval of vessel. In order to read these readings, we will install thermocouples into the vessel. By observing the values of the vessel, we can get an information about the heating rate. Whether it is greater than 140 degrees Celsius or whether it is within the permissible limit of the code. The third statement is UCS56D3. That means during the holding time, there shall not be a greater difference than 83 degrees Celsius between the highest and the lowest temperature throughout the portion of the vessel being heat treated. We all know that soaking is the time period. It is the period of constant temperature. What is the time period on which the vessel be in a state of thermal equilibrium? In soaking, there shall not be a temperature gradient greater than 83 degrees Celsius in any part of the vessel. And then UCS 56 D4 state that avoid excessive oxidation. That means during the heating and holding period, the furnace atmosphere shall be so controlled as to avoid excessive oxidation of the surface of the vessel. If we haven't controlled the furnace atmosphere, the excessive oxygen react with the metal surface results in the formation of rust, which is also called metal corrosion, which is not a suitable thing. And also, the furnace shall be of such a design as to prevent direct impingement of the flame on the vessel. That is another case. Never allow the flame to come into direct contact with the vessel. Then the next statement is given in UW 40A2. That is the minimum overlap is 1.5 meter. If the vessel is too big and we can't accommodate the vessel in a single post well heat treatment cycle, that means we require multiple, that is two post well heat treatment cycles for a single vessel. In that case, the first portion of the vessel is heat treated and removed, then the second portion is inserted into the furnace. At that time, at least 1.5 meter of the area that was previously heat treated shall be present in the area to be heat treated. The next is UCS 56 D5, that is the cooling rate. Cooling rate shall be done in a cool closed furnace or cooling chamber at a rate not greater than 280 degrees Celsius per hour divided by the maximum metal thickness of the shell or head plate in inches. But in no cases more than 280 degrees Celsius per hour. That means the code restrict the cooling rate. The maximum cooling rate shall be restricted to 280 degrees degrees Celsius per hour. In order to obtain the cooling rate, divide the 280 degrees Celsius per hour by the nominal thickness of the vessel in inches. We will get the cooling rate. The last statement 
is given in UCS 56D5. That is, after 425 degrees Celsius, the vessel may be cooled in still air. The cooling process, that is the controlled cooling process, is taken place in that in the furnace, whereas up to up to 425 degrees Celsius, right from 425 degrees Celsius to below, the cooling can be in the still layer. This is a sample example to find out the heating rate and cooling rate of the vessel. We have a vessel with a plate thickness of 65 mm, which is equivalent to 2.6 inches. The heating rate shall be 222 divided by 2.6, which is equal to 85.38 degrees Celsius per hour inches. And the cooling rate shall be 280 divided by 2.6, which is equal to 107.6 degrees Celsius per hour inches. By using the formula given in 222 degrees Celsius per hour and 280 degrees Celsius per hour in UCS D5 and UCS D2. And we move down to table UCS 56.1 in order to find out the soaking temperature for different material thickness. The table UCS 56.1 postural heat treatment requirements for carbon and low alloy steel for P number 1 material. As we all know, ASME divide the base metals into different P number in accordance with their mechanical properties, vulnerability, physical properties, etc. So they are classified into P number 1, P number 2, P number 3. P number materials are again classified into different group numbers such as group number 1, group number 2, group number 3 when there is, a, there is an impact requirement. The table UCS 56.1 is for P number 1, group number 1, 2, 3 material. That gives the minimum soaking temperature for different material thickness. Up to 2 inch, 1 hour per inch and 15 minutes minimum. Over 2 inch to 5 inches, 15 minutes to 125, that is 2 hour plus, sorry, 2 hour plus 15 minutes for each additional inches is required. Over 5 inches, 2 hour plus 15 minutes for each additional inches. Beneath the table UCS 56.1, there is a requirement. There's a general note and which consists of mandatory requirements. That means the these are the mandatory requirements given under the table UCS 56.1. The first mandatory requirement is for well joints over 38 mm nominal thickness must be heat post well heat treated PWHD. But there's an exemption given beneath below beneath that statement which state that for joints over 32 mm nominal thickness to 38 mm thickness unless no preheat is applied at a minimum temperature of 95 degrees celsius that means right from 32 to 30 <coughs> 38 mm thickness if we haven't preheated the base material or the vessel then pwht is required right from 32 mm nominal thickness. And the last statement states that for all thickness of well when imposed by service restrictions, uh, that means for all thickness of material must be heat treated, post well heat treated when there is a service restriction which is imposed by the code. Let's have a look up to the UW2. UW2A state that based on the requirement of UW2A, when our service is lethal and our material is carbon steel or low alloy steel, then we have to PWHD for all thickness of material. That is, no matter whether our th uh, thickness of the material is 38 mm or 20 mm, 15 mm, whatever, PWHD is mandatory for lethal services for P number 1, group number 1, 2, 3 materials. 
and second is based on the requirements of 2C when our pressure vessel is unfair steam boiler and our material is carbon steel or low alloy steel. This is the second statement which is which requires PWHD. And the third statement is based on the requirements of UW2D when our pressure vessel is subjected to direct firing and our material is carbon steel or low alloy steel. These are the three cases that requires PWHT irrespective of the nominal thickness of the base bed material. Then we move into how to calculate PWHT or soaking temperature. How to calculate the soaking time period, not soaking temperature, soaking time period. The nominal thickness of pressure vessel is 65 mm. Let us consider the nominal thickness of the vessel is 65 mm. As per table UCS 56, we all know that 65 mm is greater than 62 inches. So, the, this is our statement which matches with our 65 inch criteria that is over 2 inch to 5 inch. That is, we say that. 2 hour plus 15 minutes for each additional inch. Since our material is greater than 2 inch, it must be heat treated for 2 hour, soaked for 2 hour, plus 15 minutes for additional inch. That is 15 minutes for 50, up to 50 mm we have to soak for 120 minutes and additional 15 mm in 9 minutes is added. So the total time period is 129 minutes for 65 mm base plate. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. If you have any doubt, please mention in the comment section and please subscribe for more videos.